What's up everyone, I'm Kel, Red Zone Rogue, and today we have a special video. Today we're talking about the best ways to get into Force of Will for 2020. Before we get started, I do want to give a shout out to Happy Little Hug Factory. Those folks are awesome, they support this channel, I support them, they have excellent pricing on Force of Will singles and seal products. I have an affiliate link in the description down below. They have pre-orders for the next set, Alice Origin 2, at very reasonable prices, honestly, for both the uh, starter decks and the booster boxes. If you purchase the starter decks with the booster boxes, you do get a discount, which is pretty sweet. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. So for this video, I am going to talk about the best ways to start playing Force of Will in 2020 here. And there is no coincidence that I have the Alice Origin 1 booster box here with the starter decks. We're gonna talk about some of these, but we're also gonna talk about some old Force of Will product. If you don't really care about the modern stuff or if you just wanna get in or if you just wanna start collecting, we're gonna talk about a lot of different things and a lot of different ways to start playing Force of Will. So straight up, the best way to start playing Force of Will in 2020, if you're a brand new player, and you want to play New Frontiers, which is kind of the standard for Force of Will, is to straight jump in with the Alice Origin cluster, starting with Alice Origin 1. Currently, Alice Origin 1 is the only one in the cluster, with Alice Origin 2 coming out yeah, pretty soon. These booster boxes run, you know, between like $45 to $50, so they're not too expensive, so you don't have too much of a uh, upfront cost getting into the game. But what I really, really like about these is is that each new release comes with two new starter decks. So here we have the uh, Alice Origin Faria starter deck here, as well as the Melgus starter deck here. I'm actually gonna open up both of these starter decks at the end of this video, in case you are a brand new player and you're just looking to see what comes in a starter deck, because I think these are actually the best way to start playing Force of Will, honestly, right now, if you wanna play New Frontiers. These starter decks are actually supplemented by the booster boxes for the Alice Origin set. So for Alice Origin 2, the two starter decks that come out with that set are gonna be um, supported by the booster box. Which means if you just start playing, you buy like maybe a booster box here and you know, maybe the you like you like the Faria one. Let's say you like the Faria one. You buy the Faria starter deck, you buy a booster box, cards in here are gonna help supplement the deck, which is really sweet. You can just start upgrading your deck immediately, and neither of these are like super expensive, so you don't have a huge upfront cost. And you still get to open up some booster packs, which I think is really, really fun. And also, on top of that, the Alice Origin set, every single booster pack has a little Memoria card in it that has a reprint of a promo from Force of Will's past. Uh, and those promos aren't legal in New Frontiers unless they're already legal in New Frontiers, you know, unless they're printed somewhere else, like in the base set of Alice Origin or in one of the starter decks or whatever. But you can use those in Casual Play and Wanderer, which is kind of like the eternal format for Force of Will. So those cards are really, really useful to anyone starting out who doesn't have any collection at all because a lot of those cards used to be rares and super rares so you just get like bonus value in every single pack which is really cool especially if you don't care about new frontiers so that is alice origin once again i think it's honestly the best way to start playing right now if you want to play new frontiers you know pick up a starter deck pick up a booster box of whatever the newest one is there's going to be an alice origin one two and three at least that we know about and the print run on all these is, you know, not huge, but it's not crazy. You can find these for not too much right now. So that is my first recommendation. My second recommendation, if you're just looking to get in the game and just pick up some cards and crack packs, is to just buy a less expensive booster box. I found these Awakening of Ancients boxes on eBay for around $50. I picked up three of them because I haven't actually opened very many Awakening of Ancients packs. And um, yeah, just, you know, 100 bucks, you know, open up some packs, have some fun, maybe get a god pack, maybe get some really cool secret rares or anything like that. It, it's a lot of fun, and if you're just starting out, it could be a cool way to do that. Just keep in mind, if you're buying from this particular cluster, the new Valhalla cluster, there are not any rulers in the booster boxes, so just buying an Awakening of Agents box, not going to really do it for you. What you're going to want to do is you're going to either want to pick up some rulers as singles, singles are always a great option, or purchase one of these significantly older boxes that are usually a lot cheaper. Uh, these two in particular that I've just kind of pulled on the screen here, these are my two favorite sets of all time. And you can find boxes of these on eBay for around $30 right now. I kid you not, 30 bucks. And these come with 36 packs. So, you know, do the math there. Less than a dollar a pack is pretty good going rate, especially if you just want to get in and start cracking packs. This one here, the Crimson Moon's Fairy Tale, is my favorite set of all time. It is the first, you know, major release in the US for Force of Will. And this is what kind of put the game on the map. This set, like, 
released gangbusters. And uh, it's, it's really cool. There's a whole bunch of different sweet rulers in here. There's like Dracula. There's Grimm here, who is a Force Wheel classic. There's like some Cthulhu resonators. All the dual stones are in this, or at least the five of the ten original dual stones are in this. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun to just crack and just play with the cards in here. Honestly, if you just wanted to play like Crimson Moon's Fairy Tale, like sealed, just buy a couple of these, open them up with friends, and just make decks with what you got. 60 bucks. Um, it's the price of like a video game, and you can you know get a lot of fun out of that. Also, this one here, this is the Moon Priestess Returns. You can also get this for around 30 bucks on eBay right now. This is still in the same cluster as uh, this one, the, the Grim Cluster. This is actually the set that I started playing Force of Will on. Uh, this is my very first Force of Will set. When I first started, I bought two of these and two of another product that we're going to talk about next. And um, I loved it. This this really got me in, got me hooked. There's some really cool stuff in here. There are really good rulers. You usually get about two rulers per box. And I think that's true for both of these. You get about two rulers per box. So you can make some decks. Uh, this one has some really, really good cards in it. And yeah, I, this is one of the ones I, I really recommend. If you just want to open up packs and you don't care about New Frontiers, since these cards are legal in Wanderer, you know, the Eternal Format, you can see this $150 price tag here. Um, yeah, no, you can get these for like 30 bucks on eBay these days. And finally for products, this always comes up, so I'm going to talk about it here, are the Vingolf products. This one is the Vingolf 2. There are currently three Vingolf sets. This is Vingolf 2, the Valkyria Chronicles one. This is a, you know, a, a sealed one. And this is a box set. There's not random cards in here. You know what you're going to get. In addition to this, there is the Vingolf 3 that I'm going to pull on screen. These ones, if you can get them for a reasonable price, are amazing. I love the Vingolf 3 Ruler All-Stars. It is my favorite Force Will product ever made. Um, the art in it is fantastic. All the cards are actually really good. You can make some really fun decks here. You can see them sliding around. Um, just, just really, really good. But it was really underprinted. It's very rare and it's it's pretty expensive. If you can find this miraculously for like $100, do it. Just, just snap it up, buy it. I think it as I knock the camera, I think it is fantastic. So I've shown you Vingolf 2 and I've shown you Vingolf 3. Here is Vingolf 1. And I wanted to hold this one for the last because this is actually how I started to play Force of Will. I bought two of these and then two of those Moon Priestess Returns boxes that I talked about. Um, and why I did that is because these sets, this one and the, uh, the Vingolf 2 here, they both come with two of every dual stone in the game. And if you're familiar with Magic the Gathering, they're exactly like uh, dual lands, like the OG Alpha Beta dual lands. A lot of the art on the other cards in this set, it's not great. There's a lot of reprints in here that has really good art, but a lot of like the regular Resonator art for the new cards. Honestly, it's not very good here. I'll show you a couple of them. So let's just pull this. There we go. So you can see it, it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of basic. There's not a lot of like background. These are just like some of the fire resonators. Here's some of the water ones. Um, it's it's not a lot of like exciting artwork here. The reprints, you know, do have kind of cool artwork. This is a uh, Aqua Magic Tempest. You got Evolution of Limits. The reprint cards do have sweet artwork, but these ones, you know, they're just kind of kind of boring in my opinion. So out of all of these products, which one would I recommend? Well, if you can get this one, the uh, Vingolf 1 Engage Knights, for pretty cheap, maybe pick it up. Um, usually, I've seen them going for around $40 to $50 on eBay. I don't know if that's worth it, to be completely honest. I would rather go with one of the boxes that I talked about, or one of the Alice Cluster starter decks. And by that, I mean the Alice Origin 1 starter decks. There's a difference between Alice Origin and Alice Cluster. A lot of the older starter decks, I'm just going to take a little aside here. A lot of the older starter decks might not be worth it because a lot of them are more expensive than they should be. If you're going to get a starter deck, I would really suggest getting one of the, the newer starter decks from Alice Origin. Either the, the Faria or Melgus one or the ones that haven't come out yet, which I think are Prissia and Valentina. So that's that little aside. If you can get this one for really cheap and you can find this for really cheap, maybe pick it up. The cards in it aren't super great. The art is very similar to the other ones that I showed you with just like characters with like bland backgrounds. All the characters are from the Val Valkyria Chronicles games. So if you if you like Valkyria Chronicles, you might want to pick it up. Um, but it does have two of every dual stone. So kind of gives you a jump start on the dual stones. They don't look quite as nice as some of the other printings of dual stones. But, you know, they're there and they're functional. If you could pick this up for like... $12 or something, it might be a good way to just kind of like supplement your collection if you just want a deck build for Wanderer. So if you can find it for cheap, pick it up, 
but my honest, honest opinion, you know, what I think will be better for you in the long run, just kind of like in terms of fun, in terms of like coolness, would be something like a, a Moon Priestess Returns box or even a Crimson Moon Fairy Tale if there's still like $30 on eBay as I make this video. If you already know what you're doing, you can always just buy singles too, either from like TCG Player, Happy Little Hug Factory, or even eBay. Um, but I would recommend holding off on that until you actually know what you want so you don't overpay on singles because there are some cards out there that are a little bit more expensive than others and there's a lot of like pretty inexpensive Force World cards too. So maybe start out small and then supplement your collection with singles after you know what you want. Building a new Frontiers deck from scratch, you can do it, but it's going to be a lot more expensive than just, you know, picking up a starter deck and having fun with friends. If you want to be really competitive, you can do that, but... Honestly, I don't really see that right now. The competitive scene isn't huge. It's out there. But uh, if you're just starting out and just want to play, you know, starter deck or one of the old booster boxes like I've shown a couple times. Or even maybe a more modern booster box like this. But like I said, if you're going to get from the new Valhalla cluster, uh, they don't have rulers in them. So just, just be aware of that. It's going to be difficult to build decks. All right, so that was my spiel. Let's open up these starter decks just to see what they come with. Um, so you kind of have an idea when you are picking one up. Because once again, I think this is straight up the best way if you want to play New Frontiers. And New Frontiers is fun. You know, it's the most popular format. Um, typically, it's the most popular format. I love Wanderer, which is, like I said, the eternal format. But, um, you know, the card pool here is a lot smaller. So it's a lot easier to get into. It's more digestible. Um, it does have a promo of uh, Kusanagi Motoko from uh, Ghost in the Shell, which is actually really cool. Both of these will have one of those. Um, let's crack this open. I'm not entirely sure. I've not seen any of these starter decks opened before. So let's see. I think this is just a non-foil uh, Kusanagi. She's really cool. Artwork is fantastic. Really, really powerful card. It's kind of an advertisement for the Netflix, Netflix series. But I'm probably going to watch it because I like Ghost in the Show. Here we have some... Oh. So we got some interesting cards here. It's like part of the deck. So we have a single Fire Magic Stone. These are some of the dual stones that I was talking about because it says treat this card as a Darkness Stone and a Fire Stone, which is pretty cool. Comes with a couple of those. Ataractia's Memoria, which, huh, seems pretty good. Got a couple of those as well. Volga the Fire King. A lot of the cards in the starter decks are exclusive to the starter decks. They do not come in booster packs. So if you want to like build a deck around, like, you know, Melgus here, for example, uh, you're going to want to pick up the deck. Now that's uh, Volga. Then we have a Levitine. This is one of the new Regalia in the set. You get two of those. And this is a Darkest Fire Dragon. Let's open this up a little bit more and see what, what else it comes with. Very likely it comes with a, a couple, like, you know, little flimsy play mats. Let's see if I can get this open. Jeez. Um, and then, like, the deck itself. This is actually pretty sizable. Um, you know, little, you know, flimsy play mats and probably, like, a how to play kind of thing. This is pretty standard for most card games. Not anything too exciting here. I do like that they come fully shrink-wrapped. You know, old Force, of, old Force of Will product, like some of the ones that I showed you, like the Vingolf, for example, they didn't actually have... Um, full shrink wrap. They just have these little tabs, uh, and I do not like the little tabs. All right, I finally got pieces of it off at least. It's actually quite tough. It's a lot stronger than I thought. Um, so here we have the ruler of this deck, Melgus. Here he looks he looks pretty sweet to be honest. And we have uh, Melgus on the other side. We have some full art foil cards. Uh, ooh, Guinevere. Jealous Queen. This is a reprint. There are some reprints from previous Forcible sets, um, but, you know, that's cool. Once again, it helps supplement your, uh, if you're brand new, it helps supplement, like, Wanderer play and stuff like that, because Guinevere is a fantastic card. One of the best Forcible cards ever, in my opinion. Um, this one, not one of the best Forcible cards, but it goes well with the deck. Uh, Hector, we have a Lancelot. Not as good as uh, the other Lancelot art, in my opinion. Percival, the Fascinated by Holy Grail. Pretty sweet. We have a Red Wizard Stranger. I've always loved the art on uh, Red Wizard here. The Strangers are a new mechanic for uh, the Alice Origin set. Reg Regulus? Regulus, the King of Volcano. We have uh, this dude, which looks really sweet. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. I'm not going to you know, dwell too much. Shade. I really, really liked Shade in the original Valhalla set. Just to say, we have Awakening of the Flame King. Uh, Bloody Break. This is... Um, 
Choo 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 Lane. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But yeah, I mean, you do get a lot of like full art foil cards, which is really sweet. I don't think you get enough to make, you know, a full deck out of them, as you saw before. Um, but you, you, you do get, you know, some amount. And if you bought like, I think it's if you buy two of these, then you'll have enough to make a full deck or something like that. So we have uh, some, maybe you need, looks like you only get one. So you need four to make a full deck out of the full art foils. But I digress. You do get full play sets of all the cards in these. So you don't have to like, you know, buy more or buy like booster packs or whatever. So you, it doesn't just come with like one Guinevere. It comes with four Guineveres. One of them is like a really fancy one, but you know, still pretty sweet. Uh, it makes the deck a lot more consistent. It makes it a lot more playable than other games. Um, so Lancelot got three of those. You got three more of the Percivals. You got some more Red Wizards. You can only have two of these in your Stranger deck. I don't know why they put four in here. Maybe so you can trade with a friend or, or something like that. Um, these are more Strangers. This is another Shade. Really cool. We have more Awakening of the Flame King. Another Bloody Break. Chulane. Darkest Fire Dragon, the the last Lavatine that we needed, as well as Volga, Adaractus Memorial, Magic Stone of Scorch Bells, and the last uh, Fire Magic Stone for this. It's kind of weird the order that they put this in, but you know, all in all, you do get a, a pretty good chunk of cards for like what, twelve to fifteen bucks to twenty bucks, something like that. I think I've seen them going on eBay for around that price. I know Happy Little Hug Factory, like I said, if you pick these up with a booster box. They reduce the price by a little bit, which is pretty good. So that was Melgus. Let's open up Faria real quick, just to cap this off. So the Faria deck is going to be very, very similar in terms of contents. Um, and by very, very similar, I mean it's going to be the same stuff. Um, Got to get the little how to how to play booklet out of here. Um, this is kind of like a rules glossary. It kind of tossed these aside pretty quickly last time, but that's what they are uh, to help you, you know, understand how to play. There's a lot of other resources too online, uh, YouTube videos. I don't really have any how to play YouTube videos, but if you go out there, there definitely are some. We have uh, another Kusanagi Motoko, so you know you get the same Motoko, Motoko, whatever. You get the same promo in every single uh, Star deck, which is pretty cool. You have a Light Magic Stone instead of Fire. Uh, Magic Stone of Light Vapors. This is the uh, the light and water one. Um, once again, starter decks are really good. They give you actually good cards. Imagine buying a Magic the Gathering starter deck, and it comes with four Shocklands. Yeah, I know, right? Doesn't happen. Won't happen. Uh, Adaractes Memoria. Got a couple of those. Vivian. Yeah, pretty cool. We have uh, Traveler in Wonderland. I guess they don't want to call her Alice, but, you know, it's Alice in Wonderland. This sacred wave blade with really sweet artwork. Let's open up the uh, quite difficult uh, little package here. I do have to say, with this new set, you can probably see the difference between the foils here and the non foils. The card quality is actually quite good. Uh, especially when I was opening up boxes of the Alice Origin uh, set. I do have that on my YouTube video or on my YouTube channel as videos opening of boxes if you want to watch them. So this is Faria here. She is beautiful we have the uh the other side and then we have all of the other cards that came in here so um we have avalon uh bedivere who used to be a super rare which is pretty cool we have is this gawain uh kai she's really cute uh we have th the other percival so the counterpart to the, the red percival and then we have some of the uh strangers siegfried white wizard um this is uh twin swords of mercy like tomoe gozen i think uh, Undyne, Arthur, really sweet artwork, Awakening of the Sacred Queen. Really cool. If you're familiar with other Force of Will products, um, these aren't textured. They're just kind of like foil, but they still look very nice. Excalibur, another one of the uh, Sacred Wave Blade, um, Full Art Alice, which is beautiful. Vivian, Adaractes Memoria, Light Magic Stone, or Magic Stone of Light Vapors. And then we have, you know, three of everything that we just went over which is you know once again really good and uh, like i said um if you like this starter deck just buy a box and um all the cards in there will help either supplement this one or the um the melgus you know it is a box of cards um booster packs are random so you know there's some variance there but you know there's some sweet cards in there for this and uh, opening packs is fun in my opinion it's why i make videos about it uh got some excaliburs more of the sacred wave blade Alice, Vivian, and the, the rest of the cards. And that's that, everyone. To do a quick recap, Alice Origin Starter Decks, 
fantastic way to start playing the game. I think it's the best way if you want to get into New Frontiers and start just playing Force of Will right now. Maybe supplement that with one of the Alice Origin booster boxes. These boxes are a little bit smaller than most booster boxes and also a little bit cheaper on average, um, about $50-ish for brand new ones. Or you can opt to get older booster boxes for a lot cheaper, you know, $30 if you don't care about New Frontiers. Fantastic way to just start playing the game, pick it up, pick, you know, whatever one that you want, whatever one looks more interesting to you. Crimson Moon Fairy Tale is mm, excellent, quite, quite good. And um, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, really fun way to start playing the game. You will have to look up the rules, by the way, online. It doesn't have uh, instructions inside. Or also, if you want to, you can pick up, uh, you know, one of these uh, Vingolf. Once again, I don't think these are super great. If you can find these for very cheap, I'd say go for it, especially for the dual stone. But like you said, or like you said, like you saw, um, you know, these starter decks, they come with the dual stones. So, you know, you're not really out all that much. They print these a lot. They're not very, you know, stingy like Magic the Gathering with in terms of like reprints. I really hope this video was helpful to someone out there. If you want to see some more Force World content, subscribe. Stay tuned for some more Force World stuff. I have booster box openings, deck techs, spoilers, top 10 videos. Anyway, I hope you all have a fantastic day. And I'll see you next time.